Our guest today is the star of two of Filmdom's cult classics, Attack of the 50-Foot Woman and Attack of the Giant Leeches. However, she herself is by no means belligerently aggressive. She is the very nice Yvette Vickers. And now, here's your man of the half hour, Skippy Low. Yvette Vickers, Honey Parker, and 50-Foot Attack of the 50-Foot Woman? <laughs> yes. Ooh, tell me about that. It was a plot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> definitely uh, planned by her husband. Uh -huh. Allison Hayes played the wife, and I was the other woman uh -huh. named Tony Parker. And uh, uh, her husband falls in love with me, this marvelous, handsome man. And so we get into a little plot to uh -huh. put her away. Of course, the 50 foot part wasn't, we didn't expect that. Right. That, that. That just. We were just going to kill her. <laughs> I see. But how did that all begin, that 50-foot woman, though? I mean... Well, uh, evidently, there was some uh, scientific experiment they were doing with her alcoholism. Uh -huh. And then there was a radiation exposure that happened to her uh -huh. uh, through um, a sighting, you know, of an outer space vehicle. Uh -huh. it's, it's really great fun. Uh -huh. I, I can understand, after all these years, why it holds up. It's, it's fun to watch. It's a cult film. Yeah. Tell yeah. about the leeches. How about the leeches? Well, Tell me about the leeches. Then uh, Roger Corman, or rather Gene Corman, his right. brother, uh, called me to do that one because they felt something. They had good vibes on the f on that fifty foot woman thing, and they wanted to to use me again in that right. kind of vehicle. So you know the other woman. Well, Always. this time. I'm married, but I have a boyfriend, uh -huh. so I'm cheating the other way this time. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Always cheating, that cheating heart. But is it fun I, to cheat like that in the films? Oh, I love those parts. You do? Oh, yes. Why They're do women like those bad parts? Girls. Why do they like Well, those? because they give you a leeway, uh, things that you couldn't ordinarily express, you uh -huh. know, and it's, it gives you high energy. Uh, it does for me, anyway. Uh -huh. I, I find I can do angry scenes yes. and... and uh -huh. Just let go, you know, be a little crazy. Yvette Vickers, where are you actually from? Where you, where you grew up? Well, I grew up in Malibu. It, it's incredible. Really? My father, he's a musician from Kansas City. Uh -huh. And uh, my mother brought me out here when I was six months old to uh, visit a sister. Uh -huh. And she just loved it. She says, I'm not coming back, you know. So naturally, he came out and joined us and found a place in Ramirez Canyon, the famous, beautiful... Ramirez Canyon across from Paradise Studied Cove. Studied acting? Grew up there. Yvette. Oh, yes. I have a degree from UCLA in theater arts. Uh -huh. I went to school there. And then uh, my education was very important to me. Uh, and I thought I was going to be a writer. But I took an acting class at UCLA, uh -huh. and I really got the bug. I, I don't know. There was something, the lights, the excitement, the response, that immediate gratification. So I just... I went immediately into Little Theater, and I got my first job, a White Rain commercial. You got the commercial. This is it. Can From doing Little Theater, yes. White Rain, this is it. Yes. Uh, Ruth Birch saw me in a little musical review, uh -huh. because I always uh, keep active as a dancer. I still uh -huh. work out. I do a ballet bar, and uh, I do some modern dances. and. I, I found it very therapeutic. I love it, plus the fact that I, I enjoy dancing. Uh -huh. So I got my first jobs in Little Theater in uh, review, musical reviews. Uh -huh. She saw me and called me out for the interview. Uh -huh. and, and that became a very it. famous commercial in those days. Oh, it, it played constantly. It played 10, 15 times a week on uh -huh. different shows. It was on the uh -huh. World Series four uh -huh. years in a row. Got to get back with you. I got, 
You did theater, yes. but your first film, what was your actual first film? First film was uh, James Cagney discovered me. He James, was wait, James Cagney? The James Cagney. He discovered Yvette Vickers? Yes, yes. Come on, let me know about I this. had done I had done Cherie in Bus Stop, and people at Paramount at Drew, got their attention. So they told him about me. He said, he, I didn't even read for him. He called me in for the interview for Shortcut to Hell, and uh, we got involved in a long discussion. I was reading biography of Lorette Taylor, and he said, oh, I saw her in Chicago, uh -huh. and uh, she was so great. Oh, I said, yes, yes, that's the kind of actress I want to be. I theater. was so serious. Yeah, yeah, theater. Well, I still yeah. feel that way about the theater. I said, oh, yes, you know, I, I just, I'm so dedicated, you know, this is so important to me. So he said, well, do you want to be in this movie? <laughs> you want the job? <laughs> Is that what he said? Yeah, he said, yes. He said, he well, you've got it. <laughs> Just by all that enthusiasm? Me. Yeah, he didn't read me. He saw that, though. But he heard. He, he had heard. Uh, uh -huh. I did audition for the production staff. How was it working with James Cagney at the time? Oh. He's everything everyone ever said about him. Doris Day at the AFI uh, uh -huh. tribute. Uh, he was such an artist, so dedicated. He didn't talk about it a lot until that uh -huh. night at the AFI Institute, uh -huh. uh, benef uh, uh, you know, show for right. him that they gave for him. Uh, but I, I saw it immediately. He uh -huh. was just intense in in the work and loved actors. He uh -huh. worked with us. Every time somebody from the press came over to talk to him, he said, here, here, uh -huh. this girl is great. She's, she's going to be a big uh -huh. star. You've got to uh -huh. talk to her. She's, she's the one you want to talk to. And I did. I got a lot of coverage from all over the world, in France and uh -huh. London. You played sexy Rose, though. You did a lot of sexy, yes. like the other women, but sexy parts, Yvette. Yes, I, I loved doing that. Uh, but it was a little schizophrenic. And I think it sent a lot of mixed signals uh -huh. out. Well, because look, I want to show you a picture, what I think is this picture. Now, oh, let's yeah. face it, if you send that to an agent or a casting yeah. office, what are they going to book you as? <laughs> Am I right? Huh? Well, those are great parts, though. You know, I, I didn't mind it. I had a narcissistic tendency. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it was, you know, I enjoyed uh, doing those kind of shoots. I did a lot of shoots out at the beach in bikinis. And uh, even when I was doing theater work and, and promoting that serious right. actress, but it was very schizophrenic, and I think it confused people. Some of the people. Marilyn Monroe, were you hanging around with those people? I or never did met. It was just a little before. I, I came in around 58, 59, and uh, no, I was, I was... You just gave me after. Just, you know, I... Yeah. It was just a few years before her death, and I didn't meet a lot of women. Natalie Wood was uh, somebody that I met, and, and I liked very much, and she liked me. She was one of the few women uh -huh. that was supportive with me. Not too Why, many women were friendly. No, they weren't too friendly. And I, of course, you know, the way I looked, it's true. I, I did, uh, I showed my figure. Uh -huh. And I, I liked doing it. So, and I, no apologies, you know, uh -huh. I enjoyed it. And men uh, showed me a lot of attention, and I liked that too. Did you so. think you had an easy time when you first began your career out here? Because well, I was very lucky, yeah. As far as, yeah. Uh, I worked hard. Right. Now, this all came from hard work, and I also continued with workshops. Uh, Benna Ree, the right. famous, uh, had been in the group theater in New York. Shelley Winters used uh -huh. to come to our uh, workshops. Was Jeff this, Hayden Was this directed. the Actors Lab, was it called? He was, he was uh, with the Actors Lab in the group theater in New By York. By the Schwabs? He came, and he also had a studio over, um, over the Cornette Theater. Cornette, uh -huh. And uh, that's mainly where we met, in this huge, I big uh, ballet uh -huh. loft. And, and that's where all these, Anthony Quinn used to come there. We had uh -huh. one of Rod Steiger, great guest artists. But you did a great movie with Paul Newman. Now, a lot of people know about this. The Hub. Oh, no. One of the fav <laughs> my favorite movies, The Hub. He was, he was wonderful. Mel he, Marv and Melvin, Melvin Douglas. Douglas. I just did a play with him in New York. I, I had just come back from New York. Tell me about that. Well, I did a Broadway show uh, that George Roy Hill directed. It was called The Gang's All Here. Right. Political satire in the 20s. And I played a dance hall girl that ends up with the President of the United States for one evening. Uh -huh. And uh, dancing on the table and drinking and laughing. Very, very raucous scene. Uh -huh. And it ended up on the front of the Sunday Times uh, uh, with a Hirschfeld right, caricature. Right. Uh 
uh -huh. with Melvin Douglas. So that was a thrill, you know. That was the, and working with E.G. Marshall, we became great. friendly and great Arthur actor. Hill, all those great uh -huh. actors. It was it was an experience I can't even, you know. I mean, this uh -huh. is too much. It would take hours to right. They were all the stories and Melvin Douglas. But how did Douglas this hub come about? And when I came back, the first thing that happened almost was I'd gone with Phil Gersh. Right. Where I met later on, I met James Hutton. But uh, I, I was signed up by Phil Gersh, and they ha they said, there's only three scenes in this movie. Now, they knew. Before uh -huh. I left town, I'd been doing leads in television. Right. Leading roles in theater. Starred in two B-movies. So right. Granted, they're B-movie, but I starred in them. Right. So they were going, now this is a smaller part, but a major movie uh -huh. and a big star, you know, yes, Paul right. Newman. I said, gosh, but look at these little scenes, you know, there are uh -huh. only three little scenes. And anyway, finally they talked me into it. I did it. Uh -huh. I'm glad I did it, but I think uh, they cut an awful lot. It ended up on the cutting yeah. room floor. Really? And uh, so it was a perception, I guess, that I was doing small parts, and that yeah. kind of hurt me as far as films, but uh -huh. I kept But that was Paul Newman's favorite film. It's a I, great film. At the Hub. Yes, and Patricia Neal was wonderful in yes, it, too. Yes, yes. Yeah, he was great in that, and uh -huh. uh, we had a lot of fun. We clowned uh -huh. around, and uh -huh. we were shot uh, by a wonderful Life uh, magazine photographer. Uh -huh kidding around in the set and I wish that had been in the movie that that was hilarious <laughs> I'd like to get back to the 50 foot woman I okay. love to see that uh, film right now I think this is it isn't it uh, we're gonna oh, show you got a, clip. a clip oh good. yeah we're yeah. gonna show a clip of the uh, 50 foot woman okay Harry, mm -hmm. Harry what are your wife saying? <laughs> good night anyhow you see the way she tore out of here in that big car of hers Cod is nodding to each other make up for all the things she hasn't caught us doing. I'm so fed up. Never should have agreed to go back to her once we were separated. Why did you? I don't know why. Couldn't pry one nickel out of her. The community property routine only works for women. Man hasn't got a chance. Unless the wife dies. I didn't say anything. You were thinking it. Didn't you say she was in the nut house for a while? Private sanitarium. What's the difference? She was off a rocker, wasn't she? I suppose so. Well, they've got some fancy name for it. Mostly she'd have these violent headaches. And she got falling down drunk. Still has them to this day. What are you getting at? Oh, come on now, Harry. Let's not be naive. You've made a good start. Now follow through. She's on the brink and you know it. I don't know it. Dr. Cushing seems to be helping her a lot. She's tapering off in the bottle, too. Hardly took a drink all evening. You saw her. All she needs is a little help. Mm. Play the husband right to the end. Once she's in the booby hatch, throw the key away. That'll put you in the driver's seat. You'd make a wild driver, Harry. For 50 million bucks. A movie star in a B movie. It's, I mean, a leading role to be in a movie in a B movie. The B movies right now are very, very popular. I think that's why it came back. Uh, there's a tremendous audience for out these. there, aren't there? Yes. Young kids today really love those they B movies. They love it. They started watching it in TV. It showed a lot in the 70s, uh -huh. mid and late 70s. Uh -huh. And uh, in fact, a friend of mine used to say, "Oh, there's another Yvette Vickers Film Festival on this uh -huh. weekend. <laughs> They'd be play it three people or four times." Yeah, people week. personate you as Honey Parker, don't they? Some girls dress yes. like Honey Parker. Yes, yes. isn't it strange? Yeah, yeah that's a anyway. Tell me about um, men in your life at the time. You had a lot of men in your life. Well. Come on, Yvette. <laughs> you had uh, Ralph Meeker, one of the Hollywood's great sexy men. Ralph was beautiful. I met him in New York when uh -huh. I was working, and. Uh, uh, it was an exciting time in my life, and no one could have been more perfect in the romance department than Ralph. He, uh -huh. he was so caring. He was a bit of a father figure to me. He was much older, but so romantic and still beautifully handsome at uh -huh. that point. And he uh, showed me New York. He just Did romanced me and showed me New York City. More ways than one. Every way, the handsome cab in the park, the uh -huh. best restaurants. Uh -huh. 
cooked for me. He was a master chef. Was he really? Yes, played the piano. You know, he loved to play uh -huh. the piano. He was a very entertaining uh, guy, a uh -huh. lot of humor. And very intelligent. Is that what you find in a, in a man? Sense of humor? Sense of humor seems to capture me. It's, it's the first thing. Although we fought a lot, we, we met in a conflict like that in a restaurant through a mutual friend and we were screaming at each other uh -huh. as the evening ended. But the next thing I knew, he invited me out to apologize uh -huh. with flowers. And that was it. We just <laughs> <laughs> How about this man right here? Um, oh, Lee Marvin. Lee Marvin. I loved Come Lee. On. Well, you know, I have a rule. I don't date married men. He, he was married. Uh, we had dinner a few times, and he was charming, and I uh -huh. have to admit I was tempted, but uh, he was married. So uh -huh. I have never knowingly been out with a married man. Yes, but there was, a, there was an Italian one... director that captured me once. Oh, who's he didn't that? tell me. No, go ahead. Tell me. Who's that? Oh, a wonderful guy named Franco Rossi. I met him through Peter uh -huh. Howard. Uh -huh. And he had Is that the Vanderbilt? Peter yeah, Howard? Peter Howard from the Vanderbilt. Yes. Gene Very Wallace. Dear. Gene Wallace oh, used he, to tell me about was, Peter. He was the sweetest guy. He he just it's a love. And if I was having the blues, you know, with one of these love affairs, and they were, you know, I fell in love. I didn't just go out with somebody. I, uh -huh. I really would fall in love. And I was mad about Franco, and, and uh, of course, when he'd be back in Rome, I didn't know he was married until uh -huh. one day, and nobody mentioned it. Right. You know, it's um, I don't know whether it's some unwritten law or what, but I <laughs> I heard him talking on the phone one morning, and I came out, and uh, he's joking and laughing, and I said, uh, "Who is that?" And he said, "Oh, my wife." <laughs> <laughs> Like a Marcello uh -huh. Mastriani or something, Wait, you know. Uh -huh. it's kind of like, and I, I said, you did. You forgot to tell me about that. Oh, I see. And that's <laughs> that's late, that's I was already too involved. You know, the man in your life, really, one and only. The Jim one and only Hutton. Jim Hutton. Yes, yes. Jim Hutton. I, you, Jimmy. Tell me about it. Was a beautiful human being, intelligent. Again, the great sense of humor. Uh huh. Just charm you to death. You just, you know. Love him. Everybody loved him, and he loved telling stories. We uh -huh. we would get, we often had dinner at Scandia, and we'd be sitting there uh -huh. all night long. At two in the morning, the waiter would come up and say, "I'm uh -huh. sorry, but you guys have got to leave," you know. And and we were just engrossed in each other, and also in the stories and his uh -huh. his uh, general great. You charm. lived in New York with him, didn't you, for a while? We were here in Malibu. Uh -huh. I traveled with him to the East Coast because we went back to see his children. Uh -huh. uh, his ex-wife had decided not to let them come to Malibu anymore, uh -huh. so we flew back and uh, saw them. I would stay in Boston in the hotel, and he would go to Cambridge to visit. Uh, a terrible, you know. a terrible moment at the hospital for you that oh, evening when yes. Jim Hutton was very, very sick. Yes. Tell me about that. Program. Well, he was. He, he, he had. What did he have? He had lung cancer, and um, he very, very sweetly told me, you know, that the doctor had given him the news. And he told me in such a way, I, I, the courage was amazing. Uh -huh. He took it. He took it like, I don't even know how to describe it, so bravely. And he said, Well, you know, David, we had the same doctor, David Levinson. It was our doctor, and he so David said that um, I have six months to live. Uh -huh. He said, I'm going to make the most of it. He said, maybe, who knows, you know, I may go on. But for now, I'm just taking one day at a time. He was so brave uh -huh. and planning, you know, putting his affairs in order. Just And he kept working for this? He working? was planning on working, uh -huh. but he only lasted a month. Really? Just a month? Right after the news? They operated on him immediately and evidently did not get it all, and it spread uh, into the, um, uh -huh. the rest of his body. So within two weeks, he was back in the hospital and never recovered. He passed on in the hospital. Uh -huh. Yvette Vickers is very religious, isn't she? I'm yes. spiritual. You are I, spiritual. I, uh, I've always had a feeling, a spiritual tendency, uh, no matter what was going on in my physical life, uh -huh. I was always tuned in to that and very protected, mm -hmm. amazingly protected. Uh -huh. um, so I feel, you know, I feel strongly about it and I did have an upbringing in Catholic school. Right. I, uh -huh. 
And then later, I uh, went on a lot of searches on my own, almost every religion. I Looking back into. over your career in Hollywood, as doing a lot of great movies and plays and met a lot of great stars. Yes, yes. Would, do you have any... I have been blessed. You I have, have been, been blessed. You don't have any regrets, do you? Uh, do you mm, have a... No, Would I... Would you do it the same way? I think so. I, you know, there are times when I thought, well, I made this mistake and that mistake, but I don't... I think everything happens for the right reason, and I'm where I am now because that's where I'm supposed to be. I love what I'm doing. I'm working again. I'm excited about it. And you're with the animal rights? The juices are flowing. Animal oh, rights. yes. I'm very, very concerned about uh, wildlife, and I belong to PETA and also to Actors and Others for Animals, uh -huh. and I, I do everything I can. And you can. help the I homeless. Benefits you help the homeless. Yes. And you do all those wonderful things. I do things. go to those uh, charities. Why do you keep yourself so busy, and, I, you, and you live out <laughs> up in the mountains. I uh, Tell come, me about that. I'm splitting my time now, but I, uh, the way the work is going, now that I've started working again, I think I'm going to be based again in L.A. and have my vacation time out there. Uh -huh. You know, go out there when I'm not working. I see. But I've been working so much now that uh, the two hour, even though it's just two hours, it's still the travel time uh, is a little rough. So I think I'm going to base here and then go up there when I get free, you know to do that. Uh -huh. I love it up there. It's uh -huh. beautiful in Wrightwood. Yvette yeah. Vickers, have you ever been married? Yes, I was married to a musician, uh, uh -huh. a bass player with Bud Shank's uh, jazz uh -huh. quartet. Right. And uh, he was a wonderful person. He ended up playing with the San Francisco Symphony. But it, I was too young. I wasn't uh -huh. ready for uh -huh. it, you know. And Any children? I was just beginning my career. Any children? No, I did not. Good. Did not. May I say? A singer. You're a singer. I love to sing. You, I've always sung. But yeah. you got an act together now. For, I, uh, I'm tell me about this. Work no? in progress. <laughs> this tell is me. work in progress. Uh -huh. I do have a cabaret act. I'm, and I'm halfway there, and I'm uh -huh. working real hard. I have a keyboard player that I work with and a uh -huh. guitar player. Uh -huh. And we're selecting material now. I record a lot of the uh, tunes so I can hear, uh -huh. you know, how it uh -huh. sounds. And um, I just, I love it. I love singing. My parents are musicians, uh -huh. so I've been around it all my life. My father's a jazz saxophone player, and my mother is a concert pianist. Uh -huh. So I got both the jazz and the classical Great. going. Great. Around. But you just did a movie with Karen Black and Artie Johnson. Absolutely. Evil spirits. Evil. Evil. Spirits. Here we go. Evil spirits. Live spelled backwards. My God, <laughs> tell me about uh, uh, what is it spelled backwards? Live. Live. <laughs> Tell me yeah. about Yvette Vickers and uh, working with Karen Black. What a we have, good actress. We just have a wonderful uh, few scenes together. They're, they're a joy uh, uh -huh. to work. I loved working with her. She's a marvelous actress. I've always admired her uh -huh. a, a great deal. I loved her in uh, Gatsby. I thought right. she did an extraordinary job. And in everything. She's wonderful in this, too. Uh -huh. And our stuff together is, is uh, adorable. They're uh -huh. kind of light comedy scenes, uh -huh. and they're, they're charming and wonderful. Uh, I was very pleased with it. Uh -huh. I just saw it yesterday. Uh -huh. and, uh, and the rest of my stuff is a little more when dramatic. When is Evil Spirits coming out? When will it be out? Uh, soon to be released. I, don't have, I didn't I get see. a release uh -huh. date uh -huh. on that. But tell soon. me about looking back at your career again. Yeah, you, well, I had a great time, you know, and I think that you have to pay some dues. When you're that young, you know, I was about 15 when you I started. You were 15? When I got the White Rain commercial, and I, I really um, I was accepted so quickly, although uh -huh. I'd worked hard. I don't want to underestimate that. Uh -huh. I was working, I mean, 24 hours a day. I'm going to ask you a question. Is there a ca was there a casting couch at the time at uh, in Hollywood of those days? It wasn't so bad. I think. Did you have a rough time? I, I got chased around the desk a few times, but I never got caught. Uh -huh. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I never. I never uh, believed in that. I thought that if I couldn't be good enough performer, uh -huh. a talent, right. Uh, accepted on those terms, uh, then I wasn't going to go forward with it. I had to be accepted as an artist or not at all. Uh -huh. And I still feel that way. I think it's very important for your mental state and your emotional You've seen Hollywood stability. changed a lot, uh, Yvette, since the 50s? Well, it's so much scattered now, you know. I mean, there's all these independent and everybody's uh -huh. running around and doing deals and everything. Uh, it was a little more organized then, a little more concentrated. You uh -huh. know who stood for what and... You were at Paramount, though, weren't you? Paramount was You're a my contract home. at Paramount. Tell my me. My home. I, I always will feel, I don't know, uh, something 
very nostalgic and very sentimental about Paramount Studios, and it has a lot to do with James Cagney. James, uh -huh. but but the other part is that um, it it's just a glamour to me. You know, I just uh -huh. I had a wonderful experience there. Everybody was so nice, and uh -huh. Edith had all those great. You had great a story about Edith Head. Tell oh, me about she that. <laughs> Tell me that story about Edith Head at Paramount. She was fitting me for Shortcut to Hell, and we had uh, a dress that I thought it, it beautifully clung uh -huh. in this great f crepe fabric, which uh -huh. they don't even make anymore. But it was, and it was a fantastic uh, gown. But I, I, for some reason, I thought it didn't look good on me. I thought the color wasn't right uh -huh. for my complexion or something. So she said, "Well." Go tell Mr. Cagney. Don't, uh -huh. don't. It's no problem. You, I think she knew he was in an important meeting uh -huh. with the heads of the studio. But she, you know, she had a little sense of humor too. I liked her, uh -huh. and uh, so I marched into the office, and here uh -huh. he is. You know, a big long table with the top executives of uh -huh. Paramount. They're glaring at me like, uh -huh. "What are you doing here?" And he saw me and smiles. He says, "Yvette, come on in." You know. <laughs> And I went in and I, uh, I said, well, Mr. Cagney, I just want to ask you about this dress. I said, you know, uh, Edith Head thinks it looks good on me, but I, isn't this a funny color, any plum kind of color on me? I don't know. And he said, well, Yvette, you're just asking the wrong guy. You know, if you came in in a gunny sack, I would love it. I would <laughs> say you look great. You look sensational. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that stopped me. I looked at him and uh -huh. I said, "Well, actually, it's not bad. It's uh -huh. pretty good, isn't it?" Uh -huh. He says, "You look great to me." He says, "They it's treated up to you. they treated stars great those days in oh, the studios, didn't so they?" So gentle, they took such care of you. class. You know uh -huh. that. I think that was uh -huh. the the stature, uh, the attitudes uh -huh. were grand. Uh -huh. You know, and does Yvette go out a lot nowadays? I'm work, work, work. I'm a workaholic. I uh, I have a lot of friends. I think that's the main thing to me now. I'm not. Uh, I can't do the two. I can't Years seem ago, to have a romance and work. Yeah. I you know. I have Years to be ago in Hollywood, work. it was work always. Always been work. They had to get up early in the morning to get made up. Oh yeah, those five o'clock. Uh, you had to be there, and you shampooed, and you. So there's no glamour to Hollywood like was, people really think there is. I loved it actually. I didn't mind going two hours early and having my hair shampooed and uh -huh. set. And uh -huh. The makeup, everything uh -huh. took longer, but uh, uh -huh. when you came out, you looked good too. Uh -huh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Hollywood has I never changed; it. it never will change. Well, you know, my nostalgia for Hollywood. Uh, yeah. I was lucky. I did meet a lot of the greats, you know, like James Cagney and Melvin Douglas, and uh, well, I, Paul Newman, We're, although he's still with us, right. is, is a, one of those legends, and. Uh, so I've really had a lot of good fortune in that sense, mm -hmm. you know, and and I, as I said, I, I knew Natalie Wood and the, some of the what more kind contemporary. What of girl was Natalie Wood, really? Sweet, sweet was and really? fun. I saw her mostly at a uh, gathering, you know, like uh, Au Petit Jean, uh -huh. you know, we had the sort of, I, I was very much um, in that scene in the sense that uh -huh. I went to photo opportunities, uh -huh. I was uh -huh. ambitious, uh -huh. and I did those things, you oh, know, I, I, I uh -huh. didn't stay up in my mountain all the time. I uh -huh. would come down if I thought it would be helpful for my career. It, uh, it was part of the business, you know, uh -huh. and uh -huh. I'm becoming more and more business oriented. But you're getting your act together and taking it on the road I'm now? Very, I'm Singing? taking charge, I'm taking charge, I'm producing a lot of these uh, tapes uh -huh. that I do. Uh -huh. Uh, in a professional way in the studio, and also um, working on a film Your movies, project. Leeches, and also The Attack of the 50-Foot Woman mm -hmm. is being found in the video shops right now? Yeah, they, they can, go into video they shops can rent them? it, really? and they can buy it. Uh, yeah. Huh, interesting. Yeah, the kids seem to love it, and, and that's a thrill to me. I think the fans are the most exciting part of this quote-unquote comeback uh -huh. trail, uh -huh. happy trails. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm very delighted with that because they are sweet.